Welcome back to Access All Areas. Damien Barrett uh, joining myself and Dr Peter Larkins, the leading sports medico in the country with all the injury news from the end of round eight. Welcome to you, Doc. Thanks, and we need to go straight to uh, Mark Murphy, the Carlton Stars, found himself uh, injured yeah. uh, in the game on the weekend. So valuable for Carlton. And this is his left AC joint. A really heavy collision that we're going to see with uh, Paddy Dangerfield, who's hard, hard nut, as we know. And you just see... Uh, Murph grabbing the shoulder there and look I, I saw this Darcy and thought he might have been that a broken collarbone out of this scans today have revealed it is an AC joint separation they're not expecting surgery but look it's a definitely going to be a high grade one so you're looking at three to four I remember when Bryce Gibb Gibbs had this injury going to the finals I thought he was going to miss a couple didn't play for the rest of the year so a bit unpredictable with that so a month would not surprise me if Murph's out with that. Well Doc we caught up with Mark Murphy at Victoria House just before his scan today. Um, I know it's a sprained AC joint, but um, to what level, not too sure yet, but probably a few weeks at least, I would have thought. Yeah. Three, four. Oh, look, yeah, I'm not too sure. It's really just got to wait and see, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't have thought this week anyway. Busy day down at Vic House today, Doc. That was Mark Murphy. He was good yeah. enough to stop and have a chat with us. But uh, the Carlton boys were in force there. Lockie Henderson. A regular spot for them, Lockie Henderson. Look, he had hip surgery at the end of last year. See Murphy had gay in Victoria House. And Lockie, they've said groin problem, but groin's probably hip for Henderson. So if he's getting a bit sore, having a scan today just to see where that inflammation is in the groin. And also Nick Digan with a calf. Calf tends to be one that you miss with. So Digan, obviously, and, and the two defenders. So Henderson, maybe just a check scan, but Digan, you'd be worried that he's going to miss. Doc, Liam Jarrah had his first uh, game for the year and rolled the ankle really badly. What, what's the latest with him? This is the incident late in the yeah, game, the late, late in the 100 game. point loss. We'll see it a couple of times, Damo. He, he lands really heavily, so it's a jarring. It's more of a vertical impact injury, so it splits the ligament in the middle of the ankle. They've ruled out fractures with scans today, uh, Damo, but even so, this is a very significant internal ankle injury. They told him a high sprain. It usually means the membrane ligament between. And look, then, that's anything from you know six or eight weeks. You can see how difficult it is for him to put weight through that. Was he ready for footy, Doc? Well, look, his mind what's... would have been elsewhere. There's no out. He was in the well, news for all the wrong reasons. Well, look, I'm, I'm sure he would have been training. They wouldn't have picked him. They said he'd been doing fitness work, but but mentally and physically he hadn't been at the senior level for some time. Well, that's the question, Dave. I mean, he's in the court uh, facing six charges, uh, you know, 48 hours before the game. It's Indigenous round. It's a great story to have him back, but why was he playing? I mean, surely you're not in the state to play, given what he's been through. Uh, are you opening yourself up for trouble? Yeah, I, I tend to agree, Dice. Um, there's serious charges too. Um, the complexities around this case, the Indigenous element to it is, is one that played out during the week. Melbourne Footy Club briefed the AFL on this the whole way through. So, I, look, I think everything's been done right from that respect. But if I was in charge of Melbourne, obviously I'm not, but if I was, I thought about this for a while, I would have had him not playing until these charges were dealt with. All right, let's take a look at uh, the Doc's uh, medical report. Some more uh, names to get through, Doc, uh, well, on the back how, of the How much up. bigger than Dane Swan, uh, Das, Brownlow medalist. Hamstring injury on Friday night game against the Cats. Never had a hamstring. He played 167 of the last 171 games, Dane Swan. He's going to miss probably a month because they won't rush him back. It's so important. A, a big tear cancer. or a... Look, it's, it's, it's a standard tear. You know, he hasn't had one before, so you've got to be conservative with that. He, it'll be uncharted territory. Collingwood all over that. Ben Reid with another quad injury. This is serious, Doc. Third time It's the third one. Times. He's had groin and quad injuries. I mean, look, four weeks is probably me being conservative there, Damo, because he's, if he does it again, he won't play the rest of the year. That's his kicking right. leg, so read a big injury. Hodgie, look, we saw him run into Armitage and jar his own knee and put Armitage, Armitage out, but he's probably got a little bit of posterior injury out of that. He's struggling to get back uh, on that sort of side of thing. Dusty Fletcher with a groin injury, probably going to miss one or two weeks because they certainly won't rush him back. Yep. He's been carrying that. Hardingham with a calf injury as well. I think that's doubtful that he'll get up, even though that hasn't been uh, given a lot of attention. Dylan Grimes with the opposite hamstring to the surgery one from last year but a high injury. That'll be four to five weeks. Probably a bit worse than uh, the Swan one. And Reece Stanley out of the game in the first quarter for the Saints uh, yesterday. Again, probably three weeks that he'll miss. Doc, we've got some good news for us. Uh, Nathan Vardy is a name that uh, we've forgotten about. One of the most exciting young players in the competition. Where is he at? Yeah, look, it's interesting. Vardy's had hip surgery uh, on three occasions at least. He's just had another bout of surgery down in Tassie with one of the best surgeons in Australia and he's been given an all-clear to start training. So Geelong are just keen to get him back this year. They don't want him out of football for too long. Haven't seen anything of Vardy over the last six months, Dars. He's, he's supposed to be one, a real talent. Geelong needs some tall forwards and a, and a spare ruckman. So Vardy... Probably we're going to see him play late in the year at VFL level, but at least he's back training. There was some concern he wasn't going to get back to training at all. Doc, who comes back for round nine? 
Well, we got a few star players. Matty Scarlett was hoping to play last last Friday night, and he rolled his ankle with uh, when David Mensel ran into him in a, in a fitness test. Jared Waite, they've said he's been out with a back, but he's also had uh, hip surgery, and uh, though Waite's been out uh, over a bit of time now, and hopefully we're going to get back uh, probably in the coming week. Sam Fisher's only missed two games. There's no VFL game for the Saints this week, so I suspect you won't see him uh, till after the bye. Prittis missed with the concussion, which is a conservative, but he'll be right to play, you'd think, for West Coast. Cooney's knees, just an ongoing issue with the Bulldogs. He's missed two games now. They're expecting to play Friday night against the Cats. And Chris Current and Pears both been back in the VFL. Terence kicked uh, two goals on the weekend. I think he's he missed five weeks with a calf injury. Pears has been out three with a hamstring. They're both about right to go. Doc, you're the busiest man in football at the moment. It's been an unbelievable start to the year from an injury point of view. Great to catch up with you as we will each and every Monday. We'll be back next week, Dars. Thank you, uh, Pete. Uh, up next, so uh, Damo, a superstar from the St Kilda Football Club, Lee Montagna, our special guest on Access All Areas.